Welcome to the Shady Corner Loot Cast. Uh, once again, it's your boy Shades here, and today we're talking to Robin of Moonfish Games, who's currently developing Space Rescue Code Pink. It is a tribute to those classic, classic adventure style point and click games that I personally grew up with, and I, I, I absolutely love them. Uh, and it's it's got like a, a little spice of lewdness to it in space, um, and the humor is fantastic. I I I could go on about this game for hours because honestly, when I once I got introduced to it by another dev, I just pledged it wasn't even it wasn't even a thing. So, how are you going today, Robin? Hi, hello. <laughs> Thanks for that introduction. <laughs> that was uh, very positive. So cool. <laughs> Um, well, first thing I wanted to ask is just describe your game, uh, to everybody at home that's listening and, and tell them more about the game. Oh, okay. Uh, well, I think you, you made a good start by explaining it's like a, a classic, uh, point and click adventure. So the basic game mechanic is indeed that you look around the screen, find objects and use it eventually, uh, somewhere else. Uh, but in this game you play as a uh, character is called Keen and, uh, Keen just uh, finished his, uh, his education and landed his first job on a, on a spaceship. And his job is, uh, is to be a repairman there. So he will encounter a lot of things that are broken and um, yeah, he has to repair it. Occasionally to do so, you need to find an object that you can use to repair stuff or you even have to create it. Uh, and for that, you have to play a mini game to acquire materials. But this is like the very basic game mechanic. What what the game is actually about, of course, um, is um, the story is uh, King will go around the ship and meet various crew members. Most of the crew members are attractive females, and uh, one way or another, he will eventually get seduced by them in the story. And uh, yeah, you will get to see a bit more of them. Besides, obviously, adventure games. What was the other thing that made you want to dive into doing oh, adult development? Well, yeah, there are actually a whole couple of reasons. Um, but I think, well, there are two main things. Um, I've been developing games for uh, quite a few years now, uh, but I've always mixed that up with making comics. So those are my two big passions. And one day I discovered... Um, uh, the, the the game genre called uh, visual novels and a game engine, the Renpy engine, uh, that allows you to easily make those type of games. And that's really the, the in-between between, between uh, games and comics for me. So it was like the perfect match. Um, but then, uh, why adult games? Um, I also realized that most of my life i've been working on pretty violent games <laughs> i mean most games are already violent if you look at it uh, even uh, the old uh, mario bros is pretty violent because he's kicking away these uh, turtles but yeah i've worked on pretty violent games and i thought hey why not try the other side of the spectrum and of course i could also have made puzzle games or something but that's just not my thing so it was kind of a, a leap of faith but i must say it's uh it's been a a good change for me. What got you into creating art? Because your art is fantastic, and you've sort of, for most of us here in the loot community, you've sort of appeared out of nowhere. I wanted to know. Uh, you said you <laughs> you do comics as well. Uh, tell tell us a bit more about that. Uh, yes. Well, uh, it all started out as a hobby, of course, and uh, I've made quite a few comics, about I think six or seven, um, which. Uh, most of them are actually not published, um, uh, except for my last comic. It's called uh, Coffin Crushers. Uh, and it's about something totally else. It's about uh, a big World War II mecha robots fighting off vampires. and uh, But it has more or less the same humor as this game. Um, so that's a thing I've been doing. Uh, and that's not not connected at all to these type of games. And I've also been developing games for for like the PlayStation and the Xbox. So that's also not really connected. But yeah, one day, like I said, I just 
moved into this direction. And uh, it seemed to be like, um, to me, when I did it, this whole community that's interested in these type of games is totally separate from the rest of the game world. You said you were developing games for PlayStation and Xbox? Yeah, yeah, in the past. Is that strange? <laughs> no, no, it just oh, it just kind of took me aback because I didn't realize how much how many uh projects you had dived into. So hearing hearing all this stuff, it's it's just so amazing because a, a lot of us in the <laughs> in the development community had not heard of you until recently. Yeah, uh yeah, I can understand. It's uh uh, yeah, like I said, I, I feel that those two worlds are not really connected. And I must say, I'm not also not really telling a lot about myself on my Patreon page. Uh, it's actually mainly because it's about the game and not about me. But uh, maybe to give an example of what I did in the past. Um, I've worked on many games, uh, most of them just as an artist. Uh, but a game uh, of which I also came up with the concept uh, was a game called Fairy Tale Fights. And uh, it's a bit of an older one. It's already from 2009. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it's, it's still in the shops. So so what actually got you into doing art? Like, did you, did you go to like a, a school to learn it? Or was it sort of doing it, mm. it became natural? <clears throat> oh, there's nothing natural about it. I think you, you just have to do it a lot and uh, study it a lot and... Yeah, draw a lot, but eventually, um, when I was about 19, I think, I, I went to an education that trained me to be uh, a comic artist and uh, slash animator. In the end, you could choose a direction in which you wanted to uh, specialize, but I chose uh, comics. I've done that for uh, two years. So, with game development, are you enjoying the reception that your game is already getting so far? Yeah, there's there are so many positive comments that uh, I was really amazed by that. Uh, I mean, I've, I've released a few other projects and looked at what people said there, and they were generally positive, but here people are very positive. So mm -hmm. uh, that actually uh, made me quite happy and really motivated me to yeah, see if I could speed up things. What adventure games would you say have inspired you to create Space Rescue Code Pink? Oh, I'm um, a huge fan of uh, Monkey Island. Mm -hmm. I've always been. Uh, especially like, um, which one is it? Uh, Monkey Island 3? Mm -hmm. Yeah, same. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, cool. So that, was, that has always been a big inspiration for uh, whatever I do in general. There's a certain humor in that and I'm, I'm not saying my humor is as good as that but always uh, always appeal to me mm -hmm. um and another uh big inspiration in general is um is an anime it's called uh, lupin the third oh yep it's yep. also a manga and yeah it's it's also about uh yeah a really funny main character that uh, never seems to to be able to get the girl, but uh, was kind of nice and yeah, also a thief. So it's mm -hmm. it's an interesting mix of things. If tomorrow, say Lucas Arts or whoever ends up getting the IP of Monkey Island turned around to you tomorrow and said, "Hey, we need an artist for the game," and you were the first person to put your hand up, would you take the job? At the moment, no. <laughs> I mean, I'm I'm really happy with what I do now. Um. But uh, as, a, as a fan of the series, I, I almost feel obligated to say yes, because uh, I'm not really fond of the, of the direction they took after, yeah, I think, part three and the remakes. They, mm -hmm. they took this 3D path, mm -hmm. and, uh, but it got really poor 3D graphics compared to uh, other things that were out there. Mm -hmm. So I never really understood that. But yeah, I, I would like to get involved, but not why I'm still doing this project. Of so. course. What would you say is the easiest and what would you say is the hardest part about game development? The easiest part is to come up with uh, with ideas. Ideas. I mean, yeah, you can just fantasize about things that you want to put together and uh, that's, yeah, that's really easy, but actually doing it and bring it together could quickly take like up to months. So... 
that sometimes can be a bit frustrating. Um, and yeah, another downside of the job in general is maybe that you spend so many hours behind your PC screen while you also could be outside enjoying the sun. What would you say uh, for somebody that was going to get into the lewd gaming industry or gaming in general, they wanted to make their own game, what would be the advice that you would give them? Well, um, I must say I don't have a lot of experience in this specific branch of game development, but mm -hmm. uh, in general, if you um, plan to make a game, uh, I would say uh, beware of the size of your game. You can yeah, easily make it too big in a way that you will never be able to uh, start with yeah to be able to finish it uh so if you if you do it do it in a way that you can release really small but fun parts of the game uh that really feel finished i think yeah in the past um it's not only the way i work now I'm, i mean i'm releasing small parts of the game that are always more or less finished um, but when i was still working for a, a big game studio uh, we always start with a solid prototype before adding more content. So mm -hmm. that would be my biggest advice. Um, and all, also take a good look at how you can earn money with this in general, because I also know many game developers who just make games, but never make some money with it. And mm -hmm. that's, that's a bit of a shame. I mean, because if you can make money with it, you can continue doing it. When you're not doing game development, what is the one thing that you will normally be doing? Like, what, what do you do in your spare time to relax? Or do you go out? Or what do you do? Uh, I'm a big fan of Dungeons and Dragons. So I've been role playing for maybe 15 years on a regular basis, once a week, mm -hmm. uh, with yeah various groups of friends uh, over the years. Uh, and that was always very enjoyable. And... Um, Many of the stories that I played with them also inspired me to to make games and comics. Mm -hmm. uh, not really uh, Space Rescue, by the way, but uh, yeah, that's a big hobby of mine. Uh, I'm I'm I think I'm generally interested in gaming, so I would be spending uh, quite a bit of time behind my game console. At the moment, I play a lot of Overwatch, <laughs> but of course, also go out and uh, do some fitness and uh, I take a lot of walks actually. We have a nice neighborhood here, a lot of, uh, lot of trees and green, so mm -hmm. it's always nice to walk around here. Where, whereabouts are you located in the world? What country are you from? I'm uh, from Europe, from the Netherlands. Oh, okay. You're, you're, the, fir yeah. you're the first, uh, from, from the Netherlands, first developer I've, I've met, because most of the developers that I meet are usually from uh, either Germany or America and sometimes the UK. Yeah, I can imagine. Um, maybe because those are generally bigger countries, so you have a better chance of uh, finding a game developer there. <laughs> uh, but I must say, in the Netherlands, uh, we really, uh, yeah, our government really supports uh, game development in general. So there are a lot of schools and uh, also companies where you can uh, can go to after you're done with school. Mm -hmm. um, but I must say, personally, I also don't know a lot of people who are uh, making adult games in Netherlands, mm -hmm. maybe a few, um, but those are all relatively uh, yeah, new to it as well. What other uh, lewd adult games have you played that you really like in the industry? Well, actually not so many, um, mainly because I, I don't like the games. Um, this might sound a bit weird, but um, maybe it's because I'm an artist. I've always looked out for uh, things that really uh, also in a way good looking uh, and have a lot of quality and I find that most games that are developed uh, are developed uh, are not that great actually I mean um, sometimes the gameplay is good other times the, the graphics are good but rarely it combines uh, in a good way mm -hmm. um, but there are a few games that I like um, I think what actually also inspired me a bit to, to go in this direction was when I encountered uh, a game that is called uh, Behind the Dune. It's based on this uh, science fiction movie, Dune. It's mm -hmm. a parody game. So that was, that was an interesting game to me because it looks, looked pretty good and it played pretty well. Um, and later on, I also discovered another game that was called uh, Summertime Saga. 
Yes. Yeah, that so, that the art in that one's really good too. Yeah, but also the the way that uh, the story is built. It's mm-hmm. it's um Yeah, there the connections between the characters are a bit more real mm-hmm. and you actually feel that you play through a story and it's of course it's about uh, the sex scenes eventually, I would say. Um but yeah, it's well put together in many ways and I can really uh, respect that. Mm-hmm. And that makes it for me an enjoyable game. But uh, yeah, uh, apart from that, um, I think also a lot of games are still in development and mm-hmm. feel like that. So it's also a bit of a difficult thing to sometimes get through. Mm-hmm. What what other projects would you see yourself doing after um, Space Rescue? Or, or is this kind of your main project for a while? Or have you got... Any plans for any other games or comics down the road? No, this would be um, my main project. But if I, if this can be my main project, would of course uh, really depend on uh, my patrons, um, because uh, in the end, I'm, uh, I can't really live off this yet. I would like to, but I have to put a lot of time into this and. Uh, yeah, if possible, it would be great if I could still work like a year on this. I think I can, or maybe a year and a half, I think then I can finish the whole game as I intended it with a couple more storylines and a lot of extra scenes and mini games on the side. Mm-hmm. Um, but if it's if it's done, uh, I would love to try another game in this uh, genre. I noticed as well, um, and you just said, the, the mini games that you've added to space rescue as well really do uh change up the atmosphere from uh not just talking and pointing and clicking um Hmm. do you find that you you obviously want to add a bit of variety when it comes to the uh mini games yeah definitely Hmm. at the moment it's uh it's uh i think the the first actual mini game is not even working yet i i'm only suggesting that it's working uh but there is like a mini game where you have to collect um, or fly through an asteroid field uh, and collect uh, uh, materials. Mm-hmm. Um, but there's also like a, a mini game plant where you have to clean uh, a, a pool window. There's this a huge pool in the center of the, the spaceship and it has a big window on the outside, but it's filled with algae. So Keen has to clean it and then, uh, yeah. Those kind of mini games uh, will definitely be there. I probably will add like at least five, maybe ten mini games to the game, but mm-hmm. but not like um, I hope to avoid that I make like tedious, repetitive mini games. I hope that I uh, uh, that that someone will play them maybe two, three times and have some fun with it, and then you can just leave it alone. Mm-hmm. It's not obligated to go through there. Before I start. Uh, letting you plug all your stuff. I've got this this kind of word association game that I play with all of the developers that I interview. I've I've just started doing this interview series, so none of the episodes are actually out yet. I'm planning to edit them in the next couple of weeks. Um, But this uh, word association game is I've got a random word generator, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to... uh, I'm going to post them in your chat and read them out to you. And what you have to do is you have to come up with a concept and or plot for a lewd adult video game using the words. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Okay, awesome. Uh, Um, Yeah, let's see if it will uh, work. (laughs) So the first set of words I've got is mellow, spooky vessel. I must say the the spooky element uh, appeals uh, most to me. Uh, I can see like... uh, a haunted house in front of me uh, filled with rooms where maybe spooky girls will appear at certain times uh, in the night like ghosts um mellow yeah okay that tells me like an maybe easy going game uh, not too hard uh so maybe it should be a um, very simple Simple gameplay. Mm-hmm. Mm, vessel. Mm, 
Do you have a suggestion? What would you add? Well, to I this think if scenario? Vessel, Vessel, uh, I could see the ghosts maybe possessing people like a vessel. Oh, okay, yeah, mm, yeah, um, and then yeah, well, know, maybe sort of possessing them to to in in uh, sexual acts of some kind. Yeah, mm -hmm. well, maybe there's also a um, story element where they have to break a curse somehow. Maybe you're like the good guy and have to release these ghosts. Um, and maybe you're just frustrated. <laughs> <laughs> is, is that the way to release them? Of course. Quite a dream, maybe. Um, the next set of words I have, uh, and again, these are all completely random. The next set of words are wet ring input. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. mm, well, <laughs> yeah, wet. Um, <laughs> yeah, you can do a lot of things with that, of course, but maybe yeah. it's uh, maybe to go a different way. Maybe we can imagine a game that has uh, swimming uh, as a basic gameplay element. Mm. Or maybe something with rain. No, I would go for swimming. Swimming okay. is a bit more, bit more sexy than rain. So, um, so say like ring. a uh, like a it could be like one of those swimming rings where you you swim around like it's sort of like to keep you afloat. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, definitely. Or maybe there's a on the water course that you have to complete and dive through rings or something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm. Yeah, and maybe uh, after you completed the course, you could I don't know relax on the beach a bit and. Uh, yeah, an input. <laughs> yeah. yeah, maybe the main character should give oh. other characters a bit of input. <laughs> um, the next one I've got is ticket, flight, qualify. Okay. Huh. Um, well, I must say these, these words do uh, generate uh, more original games than uh, I've seen uh, usually <laughs> um flight how is that sexy i mean could take place in a in a plane mm -hmm. um i don't know i've i've seen a, quite a few uh games where you fly uh fly a plane most often shooter games or something mm -hmm. and that uh yeah there's always these sexy pilots sitting in there um, but I don't see really a logical connection. So maybe it's more like uh, you're a boring businessman on a flight and you have to seduce the stewardesses on board or something. Okay. Um, maybe you have to earn money in a way that you can buy, buy more plane tickets. Ah, uh, to qualify uh, for more plane tickets. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep, yep. Um, it's not the, not the best game, probably. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the second last one I have. Uh, mm -hmm. This one's going to be a challenge. Reflective tax indulge. Oh yeah, tax is pretty sexy. <laughs> um, indulge, reflective. Well, I think tax is the most difficult element. Uh, so, yeah, maybe you have to. Uh, have to take on a second job because you forgot to pay your tax and now you owe uh, owe a lot of tax debt and uh, so you start working and uh, you reflect on yourself what was actually the thing i wanted to do in life and uh, <laughs> well maybe you play a girl that wants to be a stripper or somebody uh, who could indulge in uh, more sexy things i don't know <laughs> I like Maybe that. you... Yeah. Um, last one. A bit more of a simple one. Swift bite. Swift bite. Mm -hmm. Yeah, bite. I associate that quickly with vampires. It's maybe because of the, the word spooky we had at the start. Ah, uh, yep. Um, but it could also be like uh, something sweet. Maybe a candy shop. Mm-hmm. Uh, that uh, there's like special candy offered there that uh, the main character ah, wants to take okay. a bite out of or uh, maybe it's like this uh, 
yeah, you have a lot of these puzzle games that you have to bring together and types of candy, etc. Mm -hmm. And maybe you feel a uh, sexy uh, girl and swift. Maybe you have to do it swiftly, like within the time limit. Okay. I love these ideas. Th thank you so much for um, playing this little word association game with me. Yeah, it's my pleasure. It's quite fun, actually. <laughs> um, so, before we finish off, uh, where can everybody find you, your game, and the stuff that you're working on? Um, well, um, it's my Patreon page. Actually, all my progress regarding the game and the new releases, etc., will be there, and uh, at least for two months only there. And it's um, the website is uh, patreon.com slash code pink. Mm -hmm. That should get you there. Awesome. Thank you so much, Robin, for being here today and to talk about uh, Space Rescue with us. Yeah, it was my pleasure. Thank you for inviting me. And uh, to all your peeps out there, I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Shady Corner Ludecast, and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye. <laughs>